since this will be watched by other people, but also we're recording it, you know, for so that it can be posted. Hello. Uh, y Yuji? Junji? Yes, yeah. hi. Hi, Yuji. Hi. Um, I will, once we start the broadcast, which will, will be in a second, I will introduce everyone quickly so people know who's in the conversation. And then okay. we can, uh, I, I, I will have a question for each one of you. Okay. So, uh, hi, everyone. Um, so, this is our second, you know, Google Hangout for, for Art of the Move. And I know some of you were, you know, active participants in terms of making projects throughout several weeks. While today we can talk more in depth about the first, you know, module. Uh, it's really an open conversation. So anything that you want to talk about, just bring it up uh, in the conversation, right? Uh, so for those who are just watching us, uh, but also if you just joined in, I want to make sure that uh, people know who you are, and, and I'll say briefly, and you can add more information. Right. So um, Alessio Massaro is in Bristol. Uh, so if you can just kind of wave when I'm saying you're, you know, Alessio, can you can you see us? Yeah. Uh, so can you hear us, Alessio? I think he may not be hearing us. Uh, well, let's go with um, uh, Yunji. You can hear us. Tara? I can hear you, Pedro. You can, OK. Can, um, can Alessio, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can. I'll just speak yes. the audio for a moment. OK, all right. And Mario De Llano is joining from Mexico. So Yunji, can you hear us? Yunji, is, uh, Fiona, can you hear us? Yep. Yeah, OK. And Sharsad, you can hear us? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, OK, perfect. I can all right. hear. So we will just start, uh, basically, uh, I, I was saying Alessio is, you know, I will say a quick introduction and then I will ask a question and each one you know, of you co also can bring, in, bring up stuff. Um, so Alessio is joining, he's from Italy, but he's joining from Bristol and he did uh, all kinds of great projects, I think, throughout the MOOC. In the first week it was uh, one of the, the, the movements in the site of tension, right? You did, you did a project uh, on Zona Franca. And uh, and Fiona is joining us, you know, uh, from Australia. Uh, and so uh, Mario De Llano is connecting right now. I'll I'll just say quickly, he's he's uh, from Mexico. He's very interested in kind of the history of MOOCs, and he's a producer. And Sharsad um, uh, also did in the first week. The some of you may have seen this very powerful image of of her sitting in the subway, you know, with, with a green inflatable. Thing you know that 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 was her mm -hmm. project, and throughout the weeks uh, she she added other really interesting uh, works, and and I know several of you are actually quite uh, active artists, like so that the idea of calling ourselves students or teacher, I, I think a lot of that terminology we're using in the MOOC makes no direct sense. Like we can keep changing it, right? I think. For me, the the idea of of generating this um, this kind of platform was to create a global community to help create a global community of many of us who care about social practice, you know, or public art. And so, uh, as you start talking about your own work, please feel free to just talk about art as as artists. Not you don't have to take the role of being a student or or whatever uh, you are, right? Although some of you, like Yunji, you can hear us now. Yes, yes. Sorry, I was just. Uh, that's okay. Uh, so Junji uh, uh, is actually doing a PhD currently on art uh, and education, right? So you, she can talk a little bit more about that. And um, and Sheila is in in Cork in the Republic of Ireland, and so she joined late in terms of watching the lectures, but she's also a, a part of the of the hangout. Um, and Mario, if you at any point can hear us, just let us know. But if not, we'll just keep uh, uh, recording. So so my first question, kind of for for you is um, how, how you see what we did over, whether you just joined recently and are watching the lectures, or whether you actually so, did projects so question, regularly. For you. Hello. Uh, hi, Lisa. Um, Hello. How, hi. how you see what we did over, whether you just joined recently. Where, where are you joining us from, Lisa? Or whether you actually uh, From London. London. Uh, I'm hearing now. 
Can everybody also hear a relay, like a relay from my voice? Yeah. Yeah. I think that just got fixed. Did, can you can you all still hear me? Okay. Gone now. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, the technical things with Google Hangouts can always be. <laughs> So, so here's a question that I have for everyone, and then I, I would love to kind of, I think if we can share with each other, and then I will, I will not talk when, when each one of you, I will just say who is entering so that it's easier to coordinate. But the question is how we move from having like a, a course with these seven weeks that we did together, or even for like in the case of Sheila where you joined and were watching the lectures, how do we move a community of people who are um, in dialogue that way to a community of people who are producing work around the world, right, and want to share it and want to create some sense of public space, not just online but through the very physical spaces we, 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 we have uh, access to, right? So how do you as artists or as scholars or as participants of the Art of the MOOC how do you feel like your project, whether you did a project in the week of displacement or, or movement at sites of tension, how did that either move you in that direction of thinking of this global community that we're producing? Or what, what are you most interested in, in developing together, you know, uh, for the next few months, years, etc.? So, uh, Alessio, do, we, do you want to start? And, and if, you, if you don't feel like you, you, you're too interested in answering this particular question, then please just throw questions of your own into the conversation so that we okay. can get together. Yep. Yeah, um, quite interesting the question, so I'm going to answer it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that in the first part of the MOOC, in this MOOC, we just created a project, as you told, but we don't we really not collaborate together. So probably the, the things we need to do now is to create projects together. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really good because now we, you create this kind of community. So if you, I don't know, maybe a solution can be set some theme to work about some topics and create some group inside the community to create projects together. <coughs> and in this way, linking people from one country to another and as well the, the production of the project from one country to another. Mm -hmm. I think this can be really one of the best ways to move on. Mm -hmm. And they're really interested in this kind of connection way to create with other people in other countries. So, mm -hmm. I think that's a. I mean, I agree entirely, and so I'm. You can count on me for helping to do it. You know, but uh, like with every collaboration, it comes from different angles, right, and sides. So I think, I think there's already. If if you just joined, uh, like in your case, Sheila and, and Fiona Lee, Lee, right, Fiona Lee. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Perfect. I'm just making sure. We had two. That's Fiona. my surname. Lily is my surname. <laughs> yeah. Yes. No. I just we have two Fiona, so I wanted to make sure oh, that I'm talking okay. to, the, to the right. Sure. And so uh, I think uh, as we talk about collaboration, so yeah. those of you, in case you don't know, you should know that one group of people who took the MOOC has already formed, and we have yeah, been sharing each other's emails. So Alessio is part of that. But so if you're interested in being part of that group, just let me know, and I can make sure to add your your uh, contact information to that, right? Uh, but yeah. so one additional question, and perhaps that will take us to Yunji, uh, how do artists and scholars collaborate, right? Or people who are doing pedagogy, like is your case, Yunji, do you see any interesting ways to collaborate with artists on this front, or? Um, well, I don't exactly consider myself as a scholar yet. Is this um, for Yunji or for me? This is for Yunji, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can you guys hear me well? I'm sorry, I've been disconnected for a while. Um, yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Um, well, to be honest, I don't consider myself as a scholar yet. Um, if I just briefly introduce my personal trajectory, um, I was, you know, I did go to art school. I did get a BFA, MFA, but after I graduated, um, I worked in a more, like, I worked at a company about coordinating cultural events with the public audience, and um, I kind of left the contemporary art world because I was frustrated by the isolation of the contemporary art world, which it seems like the world of critics, and, um, I think we, um, we have, can you still hear us, Yunji? Well, we, we're going to continue and maybe we'll come back to Yunji. 
Uh, and so Sharsad, like you're now in Finland, but you do a lot of your work also in, in Iran, right? Like so you're clearly an international artist, as are other people in the group. Uh, yeah. How do you see this issue of collaboration? Does it interest you, or how do you see it? If you if you are interested, how would you make it happen? Yeah, actually, at first, I'm going to thank you a lot because of that uh, art of the moon. It's really, really broadened my ideas about this, uh, you know, kind of like approach in art. And it was really interesting for me, and it was very, very useful for me to, like, uh, you know, participate in this course. I think, um, I mean, um, I think it's quite. Um, Quite successful in the first like part of the part of the uh, plan because uh, already a lot of you know people are on the board just uh, as a like at first make familiar with the platform and then could be connect to each other through the through the MOOC and it's really nice because we can uh, you know follow our work through the wiki and then if we were interested start to communicate with, with each other even um, ask, uh, you know it's, it's really interesting for me because I like to see how other people in our, another like countries or another area can see or read my works or maybe the same for me to read their works you know mm -hmm. and I think for for continue um, it's, it's quite useful you know this this kind of hangouts or you know, even collaboration project or even a project that can start from one area and then go or flying to another area to see how even not 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 just only people can read the work but also how different uh, you know society can answer to that kind of work. Mm -hmm. Great, and you know, and and I think you also brought up some uh, important things, which is like the the different functions of different platforms. Like like we have the course, but we also have the wiki. You know. And one of the ideas that we have as we build these things is that in some platforms, for example, in the MOOC, uh, people, when they were evaluated by other peers, it was a lot of people love that, you know, the fact that at least three other of their peers were looking at their work and responding. But it's an anonymous process, right? Whereas on the wiki, we kind of, we share in a different way, and people are actually building it how they want it. So, and you should also know, like Sheila and others who joined later, that even if you if the projects were not part of the course, people are posting all kinds of things that they want on the wiki. The wiki is is entirely autonomous. Uh, people who kind of create a login can do with the wiki whatever they want. And so I think that's our first already collaboration, the way I see it. You know, uh, we I was surprised the other day to see that uh, over 1,200 people have already uh, created login accounts for the wiki. And are actually creating entries, you know. So that's that's a large group of uh, not passive, you know, uh, uh, basically consumers, but people who want to produce something together. So, so if you have any ideas for how you want to use the wiki as a collaborative tool, uh, that's that's something we can certainly begin with at the very least. Um, and Mi Mi Michal, can you hear us? Somebody join Mi Michael or Michal. Uh, I don't think she can. Uh, Okay, uh, Fiona, d d what, how do you f respond to this to this idea of uh, collaboration? Does it interest you? How would you get it, you know, to get it started? Uh, um, I I respond to it <laughs> extremely well, actually. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've just uh, finished a PhD in um, pedagogy, so it was to do with a uh, conversation in art, and I developed a tool for school to teach. Um, uh, art schools, I guess. It's, it was a critique of art schools, um, and it was based around um, developing this tool with the community of inquiry. So it was very much about um, uh, bringing people together in a collaborative way to produce work or produce anything, an inquiry about something. So um, yes, it's it's very much the MOOC for me was an extremely, it came at a very, very important time just as I was winding up uh, my uh, conclusions, and I've certainly included it in my PhD. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, also I was very much enlightened by um, the journal of the field um, and things like that. Um, the field journal, at least. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm just feeling that there's a there's a momentum starting now with mm -hmm. social practice, and I'm very excited by that because it's something that I've done 
since I started my very, very first uh, uh, degree and uh, it was something that was just, we just had to work on and work on and work on and when relational aesthetics came in, we all got excited and then now we've got social practice which is you know, another step further on and I think it's really, really exciting that we're taking um, you know, all that history from the 70s um, into uh, you know, that, that sort of background, that foundation that was started with the conceptual artists and certainly even back as far as data very exciting to see it coming through now. Great. Well, there's already some interesting overlaps between your work and you, you know, Yunji with her PhD work and also in our education. Yeah. The other thing that we can, I think, hopefully add to the conversation, like it's very different to be doing your work in Australia than for Shersad to be doing work in Finland or Iran or for something to be happening in Re Republic of Ireland, right? Like we're all in our own mm. places and I do very yeah. different works in Mexico City than I do. Exactly, yeah. You know, you know so, so I think uh, if you have any ideas for how to collaborate internationally but also speak from these places, you know, and see how social practice and can kind yes. of, how it's different in each place because it should be different, right? <laughs> in each, in, in well, Australia is really funny. We, we, we feel very isolated, you know. Um, well, I'm speaking from someone who has been working in this obviously over the last four years doing a PhD, but um, it's certainly something that's not really um, expanded on here, either in the schools. We don't have, um, we have, they touch on it maybe a little bit. But um, one of the things that I'm doing at the moment um, is trying to introduce it. I'm trying to start an academy, <laughs> a school. Um, and uh, it's not only to teach um, artists or fellow artists or budding artists. It's, it's really to bring the public and society along on these pro on, with these projects as well because they ultimately are the people that we want to kind of affect. So um, while I think, there are, I think there are two spaces for social practice, I think this is the artist space where we collaborate and we do things together and we do this, we hang out on MOOCs and things like that. But I think there's this, we need to sort of drag our public along with us or at least bring them on board with us. And Because once you present it to them, it's so foreign, they just walk away. So one of my um, goals, I guess, is to start this academy, to start bringing um, it's almost as an artwork, bringing um, the people along with me on this ride. So, um, you know, because there's so many things, that if you've got them on board, there's so many things that you can do with them. You can tackle social justice issues, you can, you know, build communities, you can do all sorts of things as long as you've got people on the same page. Yeah. Well, and also I think something that uh, is a common interest with a lot of people who joined are this experiment, you know, of Art of the Move was that we, we, many of us are frustrated by these notions that come with the institutions that we're a part of. Uh, like, for mm. example, in the art world, there's this assumption that real art only happens inside art spaces, which mm. many of us don't agree with. And with mm -hmm. education, there's this notion that you can only truly learn stuff at universities or in schools, you know, when all of us know that you can learn stuff in so many contexts and that education doesn't only happen in a certain time in your life. Mm. You know that, mm. that, that... It happens all the time. Exactly, and that's one of the reasons mm. why, I, uh, to me, the, these MOOCs were quite interesting from the outset mm. because mm. they bring together people from all kinds of, uh, you know, ages, career paths, interests, mm. spaces, mm. you know. And, and people know that, you like people who sign up often know for a fact that you you keep learning, but also you start learning early. Some of some of, some of our students were in high school, you know. So so I think I, I actually love that that idea. Mm. It's sort of anti trend, anti trendy, really. I mean, it's it's not mm. very trendy. I mean, it, it, it's, it's very sort old. Of, it's very uh, rural in small villages. They've known that for a long time. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> the older yeah. kids, you know, work with it's the a, younger it's a kind kids, of a, you know, and so on. And, uh, it's kind of and leveling. You, it's a, a uh, leveling. Mario, sort of can you hear us now, Mario, or not yet? Uh, I think uh, you Sorry. may be muted. I, I, I have been uh, hearing you all, all the time. Uh, okay, but we weren't hearing I, you. I, I have I have mute my my microphone, but yes, okay. uh, I hear yeah. everything. Great. So so maybe you can tell us a little bit of what what interests you about MOOCs and you know the art of the MOOC, but also how you how you think of this idea of collaboration that I'm asking everyone. You know, like is it is it an interesting idea? How would you do it? No, for for sure, uh, that's my principal purpose. Uh, I have been in, in doing uh, show business for several years, and uh, I'm also into pedagogy, and uh, I have been working for 30 years. 
So uh, yeah, I'm very interested in, in, in developing ideas and finding the, the philosophy to, to uh, aggregate teams and with this uh, to do uh, visual uh, storytelling projects and, and, and I love the developing plot. ideas and finding the, the philosophy to, to uh, aggregate teams and an echo, so. yeah, I, I'm to do uh, visual uh, storytelling projects and, and, and I love the developing ideas and finding the, the uh, uh, I, I hear my own delay, so... Uh, I think it's fine now. I think it got fixed. Yeah. Okay. So I'm really interested in to developing projects that uh, compose uh, entertainment and uh, education, this entertainment concept. And also, uh, since uh, uh, we, we are all around the world, uh, also, this online offline interaction, no? So, for instance, you come to Mexico City, you do some presentations that can be uh, also linked to something that's happening in Finland or in Singapore. Uh, this kind of, uh, of, of uh, creative uh, ideas that can also help us in uh, uh, developing and, 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 and coming together. Uh, some for some purpose that that's bigger than the individual artistic art uh, artistic project. I, I'm very into, interested into f researching these ideas and I'm 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 practicing uh, uh, some uh, let's say transmedia techniques in order to find out uh, how you interact with uh, different audiences that are uh, interested in the project. But in different segments of, of the artistic uh, endeavor, no? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great. And uh, Sheila, you joined uh, kind of um, when most people had already done their projects, right? And you you've been watching the lectures and so on. What what brought you to the to the MOOC, and how how do you see this idea of uh, uh, future collaborations and things like that? Okay, well, um, I, 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 I'm an artist, and I, I feel myself as a collaborative artist. And I've just finished a PhD as well, and mine concerned arts practices and healthcare settings. It's really interesting to me how the art life thing is, is really uh, entering into different spaces, um, especially because the health space has become huge now and is almost like the, um, the market space that used to um, exist long ago where people used to meet. Um, in terms of collaboration for the MOOC, um, I'm really interested in, in the politics of the MOOC in the sense that this is a this is um, isolated artists, as Unji was saying, um, very many of whom perhaps are, don't see themselves being involved in the um, classical, inverted commas, contemporary art world. They might see themselves as being distinct. I certainly do. And, um, and so in some ways, I think it's like... Um, it's like the idea that Gregory Cholette has put out in his book, Dark Matter, um, which acknowledges the existence of these artists and these art practices, but also the invisibility of them. And so for me, the, the MOOC is a really important step in making um, these artists and art practices visible. So, so that's the first thing. Um, and then the second thing is that absolutely, yes, I'd love to have conversations with people and, and look at how we can, how, how we can move forward uh, um, in in staking a claim for our practice, mm -hmm. so in short. Yeah, that's great. You know, because I think in terms of what Alessio brought up, it's a really important point, right? Like this, that there was, because we were all just getting to know each other through the first iteration of the MOOC, but also because it's 6,000 people <laughs> around the world, it, the conditions of, of, of it for collaboration were very difficult, but now we're in... Some people are getting to know each other, so we're getting there, right? I think it's the potential is definitely uh, there. There's there's a more uh, realistic uh, situation now, and so we can even start pic like picturing the different scenarios in which we we can collaborate. Like I mentioned, the wiki, uh, but like some some of us may be more interested in making artworks together or social interventions, right? That happen simultaneously around the world. 
while others may be more interested in creating more of like a, an even broader educational resource, you know? And, and the reality is that the wiki, for example, can be used for both, you know? Like, uh, as Sheila, when you mentioned your, the topic for your PhD, I was really interested because I'm, I actually, one of the modules that we have not been able to produce because we didn't have funding, to, you know, for to do that many, you know, and we just had to start with six, is actually, I think we could have an entire module in health, like how social practice has done work related to health and, and, you know, different cultural conventions of health around the world, you know, but also addressing, you know, um, uh, the body, you know, and, 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 and so on through, through healing. And so, so if others share, if we see it through these Google Hangouts that we'll be doing in the next few months, that, that a group of people is interested in a particular topic, uh, it is not unthinkable that together we could produce a new module, for example. Uh, or that through the wiki, if, for example, if in the wiki we realize that all of a sudden there's like a huge number of entries on a particular topic, that people clearly find fascinating and relevant, then because it's something we're collaborating on, we could actually pursue that, you know, uh, by, both by making art projects, you know, and by, by developing the, the actual course structure. Because some, are, some people have been asking, not just in the, before the Hangout, but through the different platforms, what our plans are for the future. And while we have sent some things out, I think it's good to remind people that we will, we will relaunch the same MOOC also with the art project side in, in as early as June, but perhaps in the fall, the latest, you know, and it will have a Spanish edition as well as English, you know, so it'll be both, both languages. And then we, we're hoping to add new elements that, that follow people's interests. Um, so, so if you have ideas for what you think could be interesting, you know, uh, you, you, even if they're not an entire module, but a part of a module, that, that uh, you please let us know. Uh, Yunji, I feel bad you got cut before when you were right in the middle of saying something, so I want to make sure you have a chance to... Um, but I think, I don't know what's wrong. I've changed my email account, so I've been trying to, like, I think I'm going to get cut again because I've been doing this stuff at all. But I think uh -huh. we're dealing with the issue of sustainability and authorship for me to continue this project. Uh, I'm actually really interested from your part as the initiator of this project, um, and I know that as you were, as it came to life in the public and receiving all these responses, it made you um, wanting to continue this, and I know there's a lot of requests from it, and I know that you're trying to gather a lot of opinions of how to sustain this, um, and in what ways, and in what forms it can grow up, and you know, it's like taking its life and are like, like the participants. So and also authorship is also really um you know how do we do that? So um I was just curious I just want to get a little bit more feedback from you of how of what you what ideas came up as you've been seeing this project grow. Um and like certain I know you're throwing out about collaboration and how we can do this and I know you just mentioned about this. Also like having regional meetings with the people, the participants that have been you know according to their interest groups and um, and also we could have like a platform maybe at creative time of having people in international platforms, you know, showing of how this project would further. Um, but yeah, I was just like curious to just hear a little bit more from your yeah. yeah. I mean, I think those are all really important questions and they're also for all of us to think about, right? Uh, but I can certainly answer from my perspective, but also from the perspective of the responses we got in the survey because sev several of the questions you touched upon we actually asked, you know, in the exit, like when the course finished, for students to, to give us their opinion. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that I thought we could talk about in, to, in, in today's Google Hangout. On the one hand, I see my role as uh, one, like, initiating, but also kind of facilitating certain things, right? And so, for example, if three people who met through the MOOC start collaborating, I think I'm, I would be very happy. I feel like then something good happened. But that means, that doesn't mean that that's my work. That's their work, you know? Like, uh, I would not want to take authorship or credit for the work that they are doing. That's their work, you know? That's different than if we're trying to do ev something big together as, you know, uh, the art of the MOOC. To, you know, if we're together decide, say, 10 people who meet through the MOOC, let's do a new module of art of the MOOC, then certainly then my role is more uh, that, because it's about continuity, providing continuity. Like, 
on the very practical side, because I think enough of you will care about these practical aspects of art <laughs> and, and social life, um, I feel very lucky to be in a university that supports these types of things and that has helped us put this together, right? And that where I, um, sure, it takes a huge amount of time, but still, I can do it. You know, I, you know, I, there's, there's time allocated for me to do this, right? That is not the case in many other situations, and I have also been in past moments in my life in this situation where you always have to do these things on the side, you know? Uh, and so in a way, I think of it more kind of like how Fiona was describing it. To me, this was never just a course. It's kind of like starting, an, like a, not an institution, but starting a school, but that an international school that hopefully will take a life of its own. And, and I have no idea where it's going, but I never started it with the idea that I wouldn't spend at least three to five years working on it. Mm -hmm. Like, for me, it's not something that you just start and then go away, you know? And, and, okay, because a lot of the art world does that, right? Like, right. a project begins, okay, it's done, and the, uh, that's part of the routine of the avant-garde, right? Like, the constant newness, you know? You kind of... And, and for me, this type of project requires, if not long-term sustainability in terms of 20, 30 years, I don't think we should think in those terms, at right. least... Three to five, like basically, what can we do for a few years, you know, um, and see where it goes? And I'm de definitely dedicated to, to doing that. Uh, but I, I'm not. In terms of one thing that to me was quite interesting from the survey, which I, I wanted to share today, is like one of the questions we asked everyone was whether they thought this was uh, more an artwork than a course, mm -hmm. or whether people thought it was more a course than an artwork, right? And or neither one, you know, and and. And we had an exactly equal number of students who thought it was more a course than an artwork mm -hmm. than students who thought it was more an artwork than a course. Mm -hmm. Which to me, on the one hand, you may think that's a paradox or a contradiction. But to me, as actually, that's a beautiful balance because mm -hmm. I'm happy with both. Like, I think it's fine if somebody took the MOOC and thought, I learned a lot, but I don't think it's an artwork. That's fine with me. And, and likewise, I think if somebody really wanted to think of the MOOC as a medium, that we're working, that all of us were working on together, you know, and stretching and, and trying to manipulate, then then I both both goals to me are as legitimate and as important, you know. Uh, the, a bad result for me would have been if we if the majority of people who took the MOOC, for example, had thought that it was, you know, neither, you know, or that or that it was certainly not a course, or that it was certainly not an artwork, you know. But but this kind of in other words, what I'm trying to say is that sometimes we're very afraid of contradictions or we think that everybody has to agree so that we can collaborate. And I think that's not the case at all. You know, we can have actually a, a paradoxical response from a survey that is actually a good situation because you have tension. Uh, so um, I think what I also want to do is uh, open up the space for questions for each other, you know, so, like, so that you can ask questions to each other. So, um, uh, Sharsad, like, is, is something, did something come up while you were working on your projects where you wished you could ask other MOOC participants something or, or same, like, Alessio or for other others? Like, is there something you would like to ask others? Um. Uh, pardon me, I couldn't follow you in this moment. You, did you ask me a question? Yes. If you, the, if you, the question is to you and also to others is basically I would love to use the opportunity that we're talking together and it's not just me yeah. here, you know, for you to talk to each other like in terms of asking questions you may have for other people who took the MOOC, you know? So yeah. do you have any questions or things that you wanted, you would have liked to ask at any point in a more direct way to people who also did projects? Like I know that Several of you who are in the conversation actually did projects, others didn't. So you may have a question for someone who was also trying to make work, you know, or, or just... Uh... Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, just maybe it's not really, you know, coming, you know, connect to the uh, discussion, but during these days I just uh, saw a book uh, about, it was kind of uh, one of uh, artists, uh, you know, projects. He did something like um, uh, permanent in the you know in the cities, like with the with the object that you could find in the street. And sometimes that I saw that uh, he just like you know the it 
somehow he goes from making something new as a, like a, a spontaneous uh, a sculpture to even to go to the some part of like uh, destroyed some part of like this public place destroyed in in I mean um, destroyed to make a new thing and during these days I just felt by myself which is like the borders of these things sometimes as a like displacement project do we have like the right to even uh, destroy something in the public place means to make something new I'm not sure that my question is so, uh, quite you know clear I'm so sorry about that but no, I, just I think it's a good one in fact I one of my seminars here at Duke is called iconoclasm and destruction and we we talk about that relationship a lot between creation and destruction and how what happens when artists are iconoclasts and whether you know it's it's a whole issue of not just aesthetics but the rights as you say I want to make sure that we also say hi to uh, Michael, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing your name right. Michelle, can you hear me? Michelle, okay, sorry. <laughs> it's just when it's written, it can be pronounced. English is a tricky language. It can be. Yeah. And 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 you're joining us from where now? Uh, I'm I'm Australian, but I've been living and working in the United Arab Emirates for five years. That's right. And uh, you also produce fantastic projects throughout the MOOC, you know, and some of them are on the wiki, you know, and also on Facebook. So what do you think of this idea? You were, I think you were listening in before, but we couldn't see the video feed, and I kept seeing if you could yeah. hear us. But so what do you think of this uh, idea of, of using the first six, seven weeks of the MOOC to create a platform then for people to collaborate with each other? Does that interest you? or? It does interest me because um, they're like, hey, the, there, is a, there is an art community here, but it's very kind of... Um, uh, very kind of beginning, so there's not a lot of people making work in my vein here. So the MOOC kind of allowed me to tap into an international community again, which was really um, probably the most valuable thing for me. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I actually want to stress, which to me uh, is very important about what we did together, which is uh, people tend to assume that art, contemporary art, but any type of art, only happens in big cities. You know, uh, or not just big cities, but in big cities of the so-called West, uh, Paris, New York, etc. And while the world has opened up a little bit through these biennials, and now we have, you know, we have Sharjah, we have Sao Paulo, we have, you know, uh, Havana. We it's still these big cities, and and when you live outside of those, and even in those big cities, for example, Tehran is a huge city, but it's it's somehow not considered to be part of an international art community, right? Yeah, and yeah. so I think something that I'm really happy with what happened with the MOOC, and I'm very interested in, in helping sustain and nurture and work on together, is for those of us who, who are part of communities, like I live in a small town in North Carolina, you know? <laughs> it doesn't mean that, that I don't care about art. It doesn't mean I don't know about art, you know? And so I think so many of the people who join through the MOOC are in what we would call small places, or big places that are considered to be not in the center of things, you know? And mm -hmm. to me, that's actually a great thing. It's not a handicap. It's, it's what makes it so exciting. But, but it's also what often excludes us from, from the kind of the mainstream circuits, et cetera, right? So um, even, for example, Alessio, like the relationship between Bristol and, and London in the UK, right? Or the places where you were doing your work in Italy and Rome, you know, like there's, there's yeah. always these relationships between the rural and the urban. So I'd love to hear from all of you, like whatever you want to share about this relationship between the the smaller place and the larger place. And that's really interesting for me um, because I did my first degree on an island uh, in West Cork. Uh, it's called Shirken Island, uh -huh. and we ran. In, it was run by um, the Dublin University in a community hall. And it was run uh, as an access model for adults, so you could go Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and you'd mm -hmm. do blocks, and, and that's how the course ran. So people who had lives as people working, people who had caring responsibilities, they could access the course because of the way that it was run. Uh, it was a four-year course uh, on an island with no more than 200 people. Mm -hmm. I'm very fortunate that I live at the port for the island, which is another very small place called Baltimore, and it mm -hmm. only has 200 people. 
Um, mm -hmm. I'm currently doing a project in the West Cork Arts Centre, um, and it's a uh, we call it urban explorer, but the town is <laughs> tiny. <laughs> and, um, it's uh, uh, on a piece of uh, urban wasteland within the town. So. Um, you know, these scalings of small and large are so relative, you know, yeah. um, it's really interesting. Um, I'm also involved in a, a, um, a book group, so I'm based in Baltimore and the rest of the book group, the, the reading group are based in Dublin and I, I dial in through uh, Skype. You know, so for an artist practicing as I am in a very, you know, you know marginal community, you know, technology is really important for me in terms of connecting with the community of artists. So, and, and it's also you know, how we can see... The opportunity. Yeah, sorry, it's also how we can see this MOOC as an experiment as part of a longer lineage or tradition of, like for example in Mexico where I'm from, like um, people in rural settings have learned a lot through these uh, uh, study by correspondence systems where you know, people would get materials mailed and then they would do their exams by mail, you know. People could do an entire degree with that type of learning, and 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 of course, urban people look down upon that and think it's a lesser education. When why does it have to be? You know, and and so I think there's kind of, but it, that's in the education side. But if you look at uh, uh, like experimental art fluxes, right, or these types of groups, uh, we're in touch with each other through the mail system around the world. Like they didn't require these expensive galleries and all these things. You know. And so, so I, I I think there's a lot of potential there from what for what we've started. Um, Alessio, did you want to say something about this? Um, uh, just that for me it was really this part of the mail that you're talking about um, new because um, I don't used to work a lot with technology. So the art of the MOOC changed more that part of my way to create projects. I was already in social art, engaged art and public art, but. The, the idea to use Google and Go, to use Skype to make projects, to use mail is really new mm -hmm. for me. And I'm sure in Italy it's not so common to use uh, correspondence email uh, or better course using the mail. So the idea to teach using the internet is something quite new for us. Mm -hmm. And for me it was, okay, I studied outside Italy as well, but it was new to have that opportunity back home there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So definitely um, that can be really, yeah. yeah. Fiona, did you want to say something? Um, yeah, I was just going to say yeah, something about people talking here, so I'm noising now. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say something about... Um, and the, the, another point that I want to say is that the deadline in the MOOC was really um, strict. And it was um, no, like a, a reason to be really focused on this project. Mm -hmm. And something that can help the people to be focused on. My question for the people that joined the MOOC after us is that probably they're not taking this kind of strict deadline to make a project, so the project is going to be really different. Because for me, it was not like to create a project during the MOOC, but to create idea to make a project later. I'm going to develop my project in this month yeah. now and then, then month to come. Yeah. So that's a really different perspective for us and the people that do, is doing the MOOC now. And that's also how I'm hoping people will use the wiki, right? Because in the one in the MOOC, you only had one week to do something, and a week is a ridiculously short amount of time to do anything mm -hmm. meaningful, right? Most things in life don't happen in a week, fortunately, you know, <laughs> at least if they're worth doing, you know. And so, so, but that's that's fine. You got an idea started, and so, for example, on the wiki, the way at least I would love to see the wiki used is that people begin their work, but they can keep changing it, enriching it, growing it, you know, linking it with other people's work, you know, so that's unlike the course itself, once yeah, you're creating this other, yeah, yeah. But in fact, for me, the most interesting part is that, that we not create um, a different approach, but something is developing to the yeah. time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the idea to just create a lot of, you know, ideas for new projects that was really good. Now I'm probably going to spend the next year working the idea that I got during the MOOC. Yeah. So, okay. And as well, this way to create projects, I think it fits better in the idea of this community of people working around the world because mm -hmm. you just start a project and we will develop with someone else in another part, so we don't need something fixed. Mm -hmm. That's probably the key on the way to work now. Well, and it's an interesting tension too because uh, many of the debates on the forum, you know, there, there are all kinds of debates on the forums while the course was active, mm -hmm. and one of them was about uh, people who thought every 
project submitted should be public. And of course, those of us who created the movie, like, we couldn't do that. We were like, you can't, people ha have a right to privacy, right? Like they, if they want their work yeah. to be anonymous, they should have that right, you know? But of course, I would also love as many projects as possible to be shared and visible with everyone. Uh, but, but so one of the tensions there, and I, I agree that this idea of, for me, the idea of doing something in a week is not about creating masterworks, you know? Some, 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 some pieces were fantastic and actually really g gorgeous looking, like, like Michelle, your piece, you did the piece with the records, right? Uh, no, 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 I'm, I'm which, which was your, fir your first piece in displacement? Can you remind me? Um, oh, I did one, I re revisited um, Sophie Carl's piece and put it. Yes, yes. That's sorry. I got, I got, it, I got it confused. But yeah, that was. You spent quite a bit of time on that, right? So that was yeah, a very elaborate yeah. piece. Yeah. And so while there were, of course, these very, I think what I were accomplished artworks done in an incredibly short amount of time. The the and the, over the long run, it's it's a bit. So much of what we do in art uh, has become about judgment. You know. And judgment is both a moral thing and also an aesthetic quality thing. And of I would course, also, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I would also say too, because the public space is so different depending where you are. And where I'm making work, there are very strict defamation laws. And so you, in terms of um, how you practice, um, you, ha you do have to be very kind of sensitive. There's very different kind of... Um, what you can and can't show in terms of imagery is much, much more strict. So it's, um, yeah, so it was quite interesting working in public space and people had such a different experience of the places that they were working in and what they couldn't do perhaps. But you see one of the interesting paradoxes there about what we have as, as a structure, as a platform, is that you could do something in a, in a place where a lot of things are restricted but share it and do it without too many people seeing it. But sharing it in this highly visible other space, right? That is the MOOC online, etc. Right? And still be somewhat protected because one of the things that happened inside of our Coursera platform is that it stayed within. So there's these different circles of of visibility and privacy or or, or protectedness of our communities, right? So, for example, the other reason why we couldn't just make all of the works public is because of what you're saying of defamation, different laws in different countries, but also people's sense of, of uh, correct, you know, not correct, but uh, prop, you know, appropriateness, you know, that's a cultural thing very often, right? Uh, but we also didn't want to put anybody on the spot, you know, like uh, if you're doing something uh, and then it shows up online and it's not, you know, uh, yeah. You meant it to be a very an experiment, or you said you may even be ashamed because you were just trying something out, mm. and you never thought the entire world would see it. You know, uh, so so this I mean I mean to, to me these are not problems; they're actually very interesting, uh, you know, situations that we that we're working on together. And and uh, it's it's an ongoing for me. It's not it's not about one team of educators or artists or creative time or me deciding stuff. It's about seeing where it, where it evolves. For example, if in the next year or two, it turns out that more and more people want to make this work so that it's highly, immediately like visible, then I'm happy to encourage that. But if people want to keep it more like inside of Coursera, then I think that's fine too. Um, it's, um, I think, Fiona, you wanted to say something before, right? Oh, I was only um, going back to the idea of making art on the margins. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, yep. You know, I think it's a really interesting thing, but um, one of the things that I've kind of done um, is part of trying to get social, socially engaged art um, through the kind of systems, like the institutions, is to kind of sneak in under the radar. And I think one of the things that you can do, particularly if you're in the margins, is you can do a whole lot of stuff that you can't do in the big, bigger urban area. Um, and I think that's a really exciting place. That's a kind of generative place. And then you can sit back and just kind of let it infiltrate into other areas, into urban areas. But um, I found that very useful. Um, I'm in a regional um, university here and the main campus is in the city. 
um, and uh, the courses that are, are set by the city, um, in, in, uh, and they um, determine to very strict guidelines what you do. So everything's very much based around um, the solo system of um, you know medium-based um, art. But here in the regions, we teach the same course, but we're <laughs> That we've got some fantastic people that kind of let us do what we want. So I'm slowly introducing bits of social practice and things like that into the actual course. So I'm trying to integrate it slowly into the course by myself, not because mm -hmm. it's been ordained or you know, written in a unit uh, description or anything like that. Yeah. So I do think that um, social practice has this wonderful opportunity to kind of infiltrate systems um, without um, you know, just ruffling too many feathers, but I mean, you know, there is activism, and there are people who do fantastic work um, that is overt and fully public. But I do think there's this other gorgeous thing that you can do, which is to go in under systems and work, and just eat away at their foundations and change things. So I think that's the value for me in social practice. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that whole whole idea you talk about with the MOOC particularly uh, is the idea of it being durational. Um, so that it's not something that just happens. It, it has to have a generative thing that goes on and on. And I think that's a really valuable part. That, to me, that's a very valuable part of social practice. Yeah. yeah and that that will also be fascinating uh, uh, when when we put it on the on the new platform in you know mm. in the summer or fall, because it will stay there permanent and people can enroll whenever they want. And some mm. of them will be doing work very quickly. Others will be doing mm. it very slowly. And mm -hmm. I'm actually very curious to see what will happen. You know, like how mm -hmm. how that that duration will change. Mm -hmm. You know, how it will have a there. Okay, the first time we did it, there was a very like mm -hmm. a finish, like what you were saying, Alessi, of the speed of the week. Also had mm -hmm. to do with you knew we all knew we had seven weeks to do this stuff together. You know, <laughs> and that's it. You know, mm -hmm. and because we didn't know whether it would go well or how, and so it was basically mm -hmm. a fast experiment. Uh, but now that we have this longer duration that we know we're gearing up mm -hmm. to, I think we have all kinds of other uh, prospects mm -hmm. possibilities to either still keep the speed, people who like the, the, the speed, you know, and the fast idea producing uh, process, we'll use it as that. Uh, yeah. And but I think one of the things that artists worry about is actually putting their work out before it's formed. So I think this yeah. is a really great exercise for all of us to put stuff out there that's really, as you say, only weak um, to do. But yeah. it, it, they really were the foundations of something else. Yeah. So um, you, know, you can't really say that a lot of them. People may have put in finished works, but generally speaking, most people just had a little, like you had to go and do a, a project, and the urgency around that was kind of exciting too. But it was sort of like a starting point yeah. for, for me anyway. Um, and I just felt that it was really generative. Like it was an idea, a way of working. It was a great way of working to have this kind of question put in front of you. Uh, and then you just go, you use it as a kind of foundation to start, and it might not even end up in anything like what you've done on the MOOC, but it's yeah. certainly started th you thinking about certain um, areas. So, and it's yeah. nice to have spaces where we are, of course, all care about doing smart, intelligent, mm. playful, you know, mm. even beautiful things, but where we also feel like we have the possibility of sharing stuff that we just started and that we want to have a conversation about it. That's how I see. Mm like both the MOOC but also the wiki, like it's a space where we can just kind of let things evolve and not, not it doesn't all have to be precious, you know. Um, and um, uh, Yunji, you wanted to say something? I, think. Uh, I just wanted to feed off on Fiona because I really think, um, I mean, you brought up the example of Fluxus, um, mm -hmm. which I thought was interesting because, you know, the Fluxus people um, merging every day and you come to our practices and making a global platform and letting it go, I thought, wow, I mean, it kind of reminded me of that point. But I think what makes Artism Group really interesting, I think the really core is about the concept of learning. And I think because, you know, education learning is for everyone, and that's why I feel like the most interesting part of this project is, like, going, like, um, this blurring of contemporary art, but, like, education that can kind of like um, transcend the rural or the urban, like this social politics is, it's possible because of the concept of learning, you know, and like I think it's really interesting to see of how this concept of learning takes form in all these different ways, and it, like, because of that core concept that we in, you know, all these practices, and it also can be organically. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, my, my um, investigation that I'm doing, I'm focusing on this 
um, the intersection of the system based practice and the education pedagogy, like Anna was mentioning. And I think if we can kind of like position those categories, um, I think that would be very helpful in the kind of pursuit of how these projects can take forward, you know, like forward. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, no, definitely. And I, let me just check, because I think Tara has to leave at 3, so I want to make sure that... Uh, Tara, are you still there? She may have left already. So I think uh, basically whoever was going to join, joined. How, do you want to go for another 5, 10 minutes? Uh, do you all have time to do that? For me, it's yep. okay. Okay, so I will stay for the next 10 minutes, and then if anybody has to leave, because we said originally we had said it would be two or three, you can, you know, of course, just we'll, we'll say goodbye. And we will definitely have another hangout in a month from now, latest, perhaps even before. And uh, Mario, uh, do you want to add something to anything we've been saying, or? Yes, uh, I, I would like to congratulate you because I think you and Duke University had the courage to be pioneers in some kind of. Uh, experiment that I think has been very successful and I think uh, and what I'm interested in, in in all this is is to know and research all these uh, scenarios and artists and tools and audiences and find out uh, for each context uh, what works and what is good for for uh, let's say uh, social artistic causes and uh, other more, more for more, uh, uh, let's say, uh, promoting health or or, or some. Uh, so I think uh, it's it's uh, beautiful uh, this this type of, of uh, course you're doing, and I think like it's a, a very Buddhist thing. It's uh, the the journey is the reward. So uh, I I really want to congratulate you you and and NATO and and the university because uh, I really like the the effort you have put into this uh, uh, artistic experiment. Well, thank you, Mike. And also, so you know, of course, Creative Time you know is as involved as ever. And when we relaunch it, they will be you know relaunching it with us. And and hopefully in one of these hangouts, we can also have have them on the line. In fact, Olga Saba uh, is is uh, was going to join, but you know, uh, so we'll we'll make that we'll keep bringing that in. Like, how, what happens when universities collaborate with cultural institutions? Which is, is something that was another dimension of our experiment that I think is perhaps worth talking about. You know, uh, because in my view, we don't see that often enough. That that, for example, museums or cultural institutions take a serious dialogue with. Uh, the academy or universities and vice versa, right? Like I think there could be so many more interesting collaborations there. Um, but uh, I mean, I think the 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 to me one of the the Eng the English language, every language has its own uh, beauties, but also its limitations. And I have always found that it's ridiculous that we only have the word dialogue. Like basically. This conversation we're having is called a dialogue, but there's eight or nine of us <laughs> in all places around the world. And same, two people have dialogue. And then uh, a rock star in a stadium with like, you know, 80,000 people and the, the, the audience responding is also called a dialogue. And, and to me, you know, the, that cliche statement that, that Inuits or people who live in the snow have like a, a hundred words for snow, I feel like we should have so many more words for dialogue. You know, like what we're having, what we are doing now, should be a different thing <laughs> than when two people are meeting in the same room and are talking. You know, and so the reason I bring that up is because I think six thousand people around the world can actually collaborate. We, I think we we mm -hmm. we we feel like six thousand people cannot collaborate. I think we can. We just can't collaborate in the way in which I would collaborate with one of you, or you would collaborate with someone else in this group. It's just a different form of collaboration. So we have to find the right, the right structures, the right forms for us to be able to collaborate in, in that particular way, right? Like, so, so for example, in some of the forum discussions, these ideas, or Yunji, you brought up the issue of authorship, but also like, you know, uh, these things, I think it's through practice. It's not just in their theory, but it's by practicing that we will figure it out. So, so what I would love to also help sustain through what we started is kind of developing different models, different experiments on how a range of collaborations may happen, right? Uh, for example, it could be interesting to do one module in the future where 
we tried to do one week, like you, what you were bringing out, Alessio, that you really like, the speed of it. Uh, imagine it's one week, but it has to be everyone collaborating on one project for that one mm. week. It could be a crazy experiment, like it could go terribly wrong, but it could also be really interesting. interesting. And then the next week, it could just be that two people collaborate, and you choose who you collaborate with. You know, so so there could be these kind of um, ways in which we could actually yeah. methodically but playfully. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And I think that that has started to happen. Like there was kind of the thread where people wrote and put photos and things. Mm -hmm. on the, and then there was um, towards the end where people got a bit more trusting. Um, we actually that um, you know doing something we felt kind of compelled to do but didn't understand. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of it, um, Dawn, who she's in the states, I think she and I swapped it. So she did um, what I'd been doing for a week, and then I did her, her task yeah, for a yeah, week. Yeah, and that yeah. was kind of Playful and um, mm -hmm. interesting to mm -hmm. and make things I'd never made kind of um, performative work or done any video before. But mm -hmm. now that I'm kind of continuing to maybe make a, a longer form video piece, so yeah, it mm -hmm. does. It's it was good to start collaborating then. Yeah. Well, and like, for example, with this idea we have of doing these monthly uh, hangouts until. We relaunch the the next you know version of the MOOC. If you have any particular ideas, you know, on like how we could initiate such type of uh, more structured collaborations, um, uh, I'm happy to also help. Like that's also why I included everyone in the email when we were organizing this, so that so that we're all part of the group. You all can also be in touch with each other. You don't need me or Duke or Creative Time. You know, it's a, that's 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 part of the the. The, I think the, the function of, like, for example, uh, I'm actually curious to hear. I would learn, love to learn a lot from, you know, Sharsad, like about how this type of work happens in, not just in the subway in Tehran, but in general in Tehran. Like, what is the cultural atmosphere, right? And are you in conversations mm -hmm. with other people about this type of practice? You know, in your work, because you are an artist who has done these kinds of things before, you know, and so. I think we can learn a lot from each other in those ways through collaboration, but also simply through dialogue. Um, is there a particular? Is there is there a strong community at this point in in Tehran, for example, that 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 is following, or is practicing these types of uh, artwork? Like, or? yeah, actually, there are a lot of like uh, like collectives or you know communities that. Uh, uh, you know, uh, each of them has their own like uh, activities. They are all could be social, but in the like some levels. You know, like we uh, we I I just uh, collaborate in an art uh, artist uh, collaborate collective for five or six years in Tehran. That we had uh, already a lot of routines like we invite, but it was not really you know. It was somehow closed, you know. I mean, uh, some people could come every like weekends for uh, seeing, watching film, movies, and then talk about it. Or we had a lot of lectures, or even a lot of like events. We invited a lot of artists around the world to Tehran, but all of them was somehow like underground because we couldn't really do, you know. And that it was the situation that every uh, you know every activities like this. Could be a little bit like you know problematic. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're on this uh, like collective for six years, and I think it was like it was the the place that I really learned a lot. And I actually I start my uh, you know social and public you know works. Mm -hmm. Actually, even if you are going to go through the cities and have some social activities, it's not really you know easy to do this. Mm -hmm. I mean. Um, Sometimes, like like the project that I did in the subway, I was really frightened that every time maybe I can be like arrested or or like the guard mm -hmm. or the police ask me for what are you doing, but or it's it's not really easy for me. So at the first, you know, it was and it was so exciting at the same time because it was the first time that I did something like in this way in the street and I. Uh, you know, it was a really new experience, and I, I, it made me more 
like courage to do another experiment not to, in the city after that. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. That's great. You know, and I think part of why I asked because I think we are we have different curiosities uh, about what why we joined this project and this experiment, but also about each other's experiences. And but we're also ignorant from different perspectives. I th often we see ignorance as a big problem, and I think when you like learning, you actually see ignorance as 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 something that you know you love dealing with, right? Like, for example, if we if people around the world ignore that there's all these interesting stuff happening in Tehran, then there's a, there's something we can do about it, which is to talk to someone like you, you know. And uh, I want to make sure that we also say hi to Olga. Olga, ¿qué uh, tal? Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. In fact, ah. are, are you at Creative Time right now? I think I, I recognize it. I am at yes. Creative Time. I was <laughs> online all the time. I just couldn't participate. Um, oh, but I was okay. Online. Was there a problem with the connection or with? The... No, I just couldn't speak because there were oh, other okay. people. Okay. But I was online Great. and listened to everything. Well, so Olga was actually a participant of uh, the entire course, but now she's uh, at Creative Time uh, in New York. She's from Mexico, and so I don't know if you want to add something to to the conversation. We will probably be ending in like five or ten minutes. Yeah, uh, yeah. I yeah I agree with everyone else. I think it's very important to create new uh, spaces or networks to bring uh, creative initiatives and collaborate with all the dynamics and the, to dialogue with each other. And I think it's important to create, uh, I don't know, like a, a space in between uh, Education and creative initiatives, or um, power structures and creative initiatives. So I guess, yeah, this is one of the ideas to be hanging out, <laughs> which is really great. I even, you know, I have some, one one question for all of you to see if you'd be interested in doing this because I think it could be quite one of the challenges when you have conversations with like this many of us. You know, uh, it's even harder, of course, when you have hundreds of people or thousands is that you don't feel like you reached the uh, depth, you know, or that you, you didn't focus on one or two things. But um, one, one idea that I had that, that perhaps could work nicely, if, if others are interested, is that we fo for imagine in one month we have a hangout that is like this one, where it's like groups and it's gen more general, right? Uh, open topics and... But then we could also do hangouts that are actually more like critiques in the sense not of being critical, but in the sense of someone, we choose two or three people who want to share something they're working on or thinking about, and the rest of us are just, you know, watching. And then the next month, there's another group, you know? So, so I think that that could be a force. So, for example, say, Alessio, one of your one-week ideas, you, you decide that right now you're trying to make it grow into something else, but you're, you're not sure how and where. Should it be in uh, another place than England? Do you want it to be in several places in the world? Like what, it sometimes helps to have a group of people who are, we, we often only get that opportunity to talk to others who are in the same place, you know? But through the MOOC, we could create like a feedback uh, format where we're getting feedback from people who have already gotten to know each other through the shared experience of, of the we all have that common ground of what we study together but also we we're international yeah they, by definition we are from different places you know so um, is that something that that people would be interested in or do you think it's too early to start it? Uh, I, I think, think that would so. be a fantastic uh, you know, idea. I think the, the good point is that we don't just need to create a structure, we need to give the people some aim, some, some reason to make an outline. So give this kind of objective, you can really make us focus, I think it's really helpful. Yeah, because that would actually be relatively easy because we would just set up like a schedule. Imagine between now and mm -hmm. June or even September, there would be like one monthly hangout that is like a feedback session. And it has, if it's one hour long, it gets 20 minutes per person, you know? And so three people, the first people, three people who sign up, sign up, and then we we help generate the hangout. You know, does that does that make sense? I think it would be no, relatively. Yeah, Fiona, you were also you said. You were, you yeah, look, I think that would be absolutely fantastic because one of the things that um, when you do social engaged works is that you just don't get the feedback because people don't really understand what it is for a start in terms of critical feedback. Mm -hmm. You might get people saying, "Yeah, that's great, that was fun." 
And the MOOCs uh, um, uh, feedback sessions were absolutely fantastic because that's the first time I've ever had any kind of feedback on anything that I do from people from the same area of interest because we just don't have many people here engaging uh, at, an, uh, at a kind of critical level, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, about our work. So I think if we could have a forum where we could put works up if we're planning something and we just need to have to know have we covered the bases, have we done this, have we, are we looking at this in the right way, is there another way that could be, um, you know, suitable and I think it just gives you um, uh, I kind of, I don't know, it's, it's, it would just be very, very helpful to be able to have um, something like that so we could post as we're doing projects. Mm -hmm. the, the MOOC ones were great but I felt that they were very friendly. I would like, a, um, a, you know, really critical feedback, you know, this isn't working because of this, that and the other. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to be able to have a slightly more critical um, uh, edge to the um, feedback would be fantastic. Yeah. Well, and the way we could even run those things is that uh, it's like this Hangout itself. We have no idea who else is watching, <laughs> like who yeah. may be listening. So there's yeah. a public dimension to it. So we're helping create public discourse. But at the yeah. same time, you could also invite specific people to be on it. You know, So for example, mm -hmm. of the 10 people in the Hangout, two or three well, could be people who you really respect. Get in touch with. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. the critic, for example, <laughs> or someone, you know. A curator, yeah. someone you really respect, they could be invited mm -hmm. to that particular hangout because mm -hmm. it's your work that is being discussed, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. and, and other people could be random or those of us who are already here, you know? So same with, you know, um, I think uh, we, we can just try that for one month and if it works well, we can... We can uh, mm -hmm. uh, do, does anybody have other ideas for how we could use this? No, I, I got an idea that maybe, you know, now it's... It's not the right moment, we have to wait, but I think that after a period we create, we discuss with the Google Hangout, it would be nice not just have a discussion, but a meeting. I know it's difficult to make it, but I'm just thinking that what can happen when we meet together, all the people that take this kind of discussion in the Hangout. Maybe, I don't know, we have 20 people, 30 people, I don't know how much we are now, but what can really be done when we meet everybody in the same place because we're just discussing now but it's really different what we can create in together. Yeah. So I would be really curious of that moment. I think mm -hmm. so. Well and I, I agree entirely. Of course the challenge with that is always money and uh, yeah. how do you get from Bristol to Mexico City to New York to United Arab Emirates and, <laughs> and Australia yeah. and, uh, and Finland or Tehran, you know, so, so that yeah. this is... Not that far. That's that. <laughs> Tehran's not that far. I've been you can, considering visiting. You can make it. You can, but actually, you know, but but uh, Shersad is now in Finland, so you'd have to go there. <laughs> uh, but no, you but know, be a meeting, maybe. I don't know. Well, ironically, I mean, <laughs> I actually did. Olga, like Olga and I did not meet, know each other before the MOOC, and then we met in Mexico City, and same with Mario, you know. And, but that happens to be because I go to Mexico more often, you know, and Yunji and I met after the Creative Time Summit in New York, right? So, so it is happening, but, uh, but of course that has to do also with regional. So I think Yunji's idea of regional hangouts could be a really good way to make those meetings happen more. So for example, if there was a UK hangout, I think we could actually have enough people who then may want to meet physically, you know, uh, even for the hangout itself. So we could try that. But the other thing is we could, something that, well, it's of course not the same as meeting in person, is to do one-on-one -on -one, uh, Skype sessions. Like, uh, for example, uh, Shireen, who was a very active participant, like many of you, we're Skyping on Monday because she couldn't join now. And I'm, so I'm, I'm happy to talk to all of you individually, you know, uh, over the next few weeks, months, you know. Uh, but also I think you should, think of that, doing that with each other, you know? So basically, it's very different. Imagine that you had, if you heard someone say really interesting things today, and then you you tried to talk to them in the, before the end of next week, and say, hey, can we Skype, or can we FaceTime, or can we talk, you know? The technology is completely available. We can do that. And the more these kind of conversations are happening in more depth, I think also when we do do a Hangout, they will be so I agree entirely. Like meeting is very important, you know. But and whenever another way might we, yes. be on 
uh, based on interests. Like some mm -hmm. people might be very interested in, in environmental kind of work. Other people yeah. maybe they practice on food or mm -hmm. you know, plants or whatever. So maybe that's another way of us yeah. kind of forming group. Yeah. yeah, and that's why we decided to start the Hangouts on the basis of the topics of the, of the projects. Mm -hmm. But that's just, of course, the beginning thing. Like if we see that, very, that after two or three of them, it, there's clearly a group that cares about health, you know, like uh, like uh, Sheila. The, she, I think Sheila left the hangout, but she she works a lot in health, you know. Then we can certainly create hangouts that are based more on topics, or uh, for example, the relationship between contemporary art and education uh, is already between Fiona and Yunji, you know. Uh, but even Olga, you know, who has worked in institutions in the educational wing of of cultural institutions. Uh, I think um, just one last thing. What's important is that we're building a community, which is something that maybe is not out there. So it's a good start. I think that's exciting, and whatever comes from here, it will be good. Like I have a good feeling. About. I just had you just gave me another idea while I was listening to Olga Alessio that maybe the next hangout, if we all have Wi-Fi, we could all be moving while we are oh. <laughs> to add a level of complexity. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes, no, definitely. I mean, I think I may have said this, and, and you may have heard this from me already. I don't think I said it in any of the lectures. But to me, one of the problems with MOOCs is the name that people gave. I think people gave MOOCs the wrong name. They should have not been called courses. I think what this platform is is so much more than a course. And if you judge it just as a course, then they're failures because. For example, if you have a course and like nine out of ten students are not there at the end of the course, it's a failure, right? But with MOOCs, it's very common. But that still doesn't mean that, like for example, with our MOOC, almost 500 people like did projects in the last week. That's a huge community. And so I think of it more as all other C words that we could replace, like massive open online conference or massive open online community or massive, you know. All these other things that we're actually doing that to me are actually more interesting conversation. than Conversation. Conversation, yeah, massive open online conversation. So I think perhaps we could kind of already do that uh, together. So uh, I think we have to start uh, wrapping it up. But um, uh, I think great to see you all. Uh, I don't know if anybody wants to say a last remark or mm, nope. Uh, so good to talk to you all. We'll send another nice announcement. To meet you. Yeah, yeah, great, great. It was a great conversation. Where are, where are you based, Gona? I run I'm in Oh sorry. Uh, in Geelong. In Geelong, okay. Yeah. Well, I used to be in Footscray, so we used to <laughs> Oh well okay. let's, let's get in touch then. It'd be good to hang okay. out with some uh, fellow Australians. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And I will probably be in New York soon, Olga and Yunji, so maybe I'll see you there. <laughs> but, okay. uh, and Mario, I'll also hopefully see you in Mexico soon. And uh, and uh, Alessio, if you go to Italy anytime, let me know because there's a lot of uh, great friends and uh, social artists who I know there who could, I think would be interested in connecting. Uh, but uh, it's been great to talk. And uh, also, so you know, if, if this is a conversation you want to share with peers and friends, I think it was recorded and it will be online soon. So, so you can. I love it. Right. Okay. Bye, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Yeah.